Dan Morgan, and thanks so very much. It's time to climb in the sulky, and my special guest this evening is trainer Andrew Harris. Andrew, you're so busy tonight. I know you have a lot of horses in. You've had 85 starters at the meeting, so thanks for t spending a few minutes with us. Hey, I appreciate it. Anytime we get a little bit of uh, you know, sunlight on us, we'll take it. Well, Andrew, I, you know, you, you have had an awful lot of sunlight. You're the leading trainer so far in the fall meeting. But first and foremost, I want to talk a little bit about your background. And, you know, when, when I saw your name week after week in the PPs, I figured you were just an American guy who maybe, you know, hung out at Freehold early in his career. But the fact of the matter is, you are from Hamilton, Ontario, as we talk about Harris's Hamilton history. Yeah, I came down, uh, it was got to be, I'm going to say, 14, 15 years ago now, um, when I first came down, I came down to work for Casey Coleman in the States. I think I was like 21 at the time. And unfortunately, I just never went home, and things have worked out good for me ever since, though. So do you like it in the States, obviously? I, I wouldn't go back now. Well, you know, your father and your grandfather raced on the Ontario B circuit, so clearly from the time you were a little kid, you were jogging horses and uh, stuff. Oh, before school, we'd have to go in. We'd be cleaning stalls, doing anything we could that way. Couldn't wait to, you know, get home on a Saturday and stay home and do all the training and stuff like that. Me and my brother would fight over which ones we get to train, so, no, it was in our blood, and there was no, no way out for us. Now, how did you come to work for Casey Coleman? Because, let's face it, over the years, she's had some serious horses how does a 21 year old kid get to work with Casey and run her American operation you know sometimes people just run out of help and they'll just hire anybody <laughs> and she just got really lucky that that I turned out all right <laughs> well I mean I don't know if uh, she got lucky with that obviously you've shown an awful lot in your career like I said you know uh, your number of horses has really grown how many do you have in the stable now uh, I think I'm just short of 60 or somewhere right around there but I tell you what that really is quite a few horses it's an awful lot of work isn't it? you know we've been trying to snowball it and and do it slowly and, and just kind of you know build it up build it up and build it up up and uh, luckily I've got great owners behind me everyone and and I can't complain um, my staff is amazing and that's the number one part of our success is just having really good staff and that's what makes us be able to grow this and and continue to have success while we're we're growing now statistically this is only your fourth year with really a lot of starters and uh, you know obviously it's been a, a pretty quick ascension are you looking now to get more into the stakes business yes that's uh, you know that's everybody's dream um, but you got to be smart about it and you can't just go you know you have one bad year in the stakes game your, your career is done so I got to keep the racehorses to, to be able to make sure that I can keep growing that slowly and then hopefully have some success there but always lean on the racehorses because the racehorses pay for our shot at the stakes horses at a racetrack where Ronnie Burke is uh, perennial uh, perennially the leading trainer it must be pretty gratifying even at this stage of the full meeting to be number one in the standings no well, anybody that does anything wants to be number one. Um, I'm sure Ron's got a lot of horses that will be coming in January, and I'm sure he'll make me look bad by the time he gets back here with a bunch of his horses. But right now, I'll take advantage of it. Yeah, absolutely. You've won an awful lot of races early on. You've got an awful lot of horses racing now that are good. But I want to take a little bit of a look back at some of the horses you've had, as I alluded to, when you had uh, first got into the business on your own, as you slowly uh, but surely separated from Casey Coleman. I call this Andrew's Aces. And the first and foremost, 2017, Pennsylvania Sire Stakes champion Pedro Hanover. He was a heck of a colt. He was a really good two-year-old. Um, fantastic horse. I'll always have a soft spot in my heart for him. Um, he was just an amazing animal too. Unfortunately, came back at three and he had a little bit of a liver issue um, and I couldn't get it right. I did everything I could and I had to tell the owner that there's two options. Either turn him out and you know miss some stakes races or try another trainer. Um, unfortunately, they went with another trainer and it just didn't work out for the horse. He just needed it a bad year just to get over it. Right, it can't always be strawberries and cream because at one point I did have him on my road to the Meadowlands pace. It looked like he might be able to do that, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. Yeah, he broke my heart. How about 2018, Jimmy Freight? He didn't break your heart. No, he, was, he, he lived up to expectations every time we raced him. Every time he stepped foot on the track, he made me proud. Now, later, uh, uh, later this season, about halfway through, I guess, you got none better. Now, this is one fast horse. I, I'm, I'm excited to have this horse in the barn. He's a nice horse, a great pickup. And I think with a lot of the great horses retiring this upcoming season, you know, he might have his chance to step out and really shine. Do you really think that he'll be able to go with the better's wishes and the horses like that and the older, you know, it's such a tough road to hoe, the older pacing division. I think better's wishes got to wonder if he can go with none better first. Oh, is that right? <laughs> I tell you what, better's wish is an awfully speedy horse, but I think off the gate, none better. I don't know if anybody's any faster. I don't, I've never had one as fast as him off the wings. Um, he's just an incredible animal off the wings, and he's got a great mouth, so he doesn't have to be on the front all the time. It's just when you're that quick and we've raced him on a lot of smaller tracks, that just seems to be the best place to put him. If you're the best, you want to be on the front. Let's do some trot talk, and I want to talk about a horse who has a special place in all of our hearts here at the Meadowlands, a horse by the name of Pappy Gogo, -Go, who drew post 10 tonight. He has four wins on the season, and here we're going to take a look at him winning earlier in the year. Pappy Gogo -Go is an awfully nice horse, and here he is winning from off the pace. Can you walk us through it? Yeah, he's just getting a perfect trip here. 
and uh, you know Yannick was getting along with them great there. Um, you know he actually kind of knows them the best, but uh, Pappy's a soft spot because he came from PEI. He's probably the greatest PEI bred trotter that's ever been. Right. And uh, you know his career's still ahead of him. Um, he's gonna have another big year coming up. Um, you know we gave him a little bit of break as his second start off the layoff, and uh, he's just getting tighter every start. So I think that he'll have a real good beginning of the winter after having a good break. Is Pappy Gogo the type of horse who can go with the Rich and Miserables and the Southwind Chromes and the Joey Batses? Yeah, he is. Um, when he's right and ready, um, and I think with the time off he'll come back. He's always been a horse that's been sound with his legs, but he's always had a back issue, and that's always prevented him. Late in the mile, sometimes you'll you'll see him get a little steppy and stuff like that, and that was always because of his back. We rested him, we gave him good time off. He's come back unbelievably good. Hopefully he stays that way, and if he does, then he'll be up in the open class here before long. All right, Pappy Gogo is one thing, but how about this Joey Bats? You told me that you're very, very high on this four-year-old gelded son of Holiday Road. Not a very famous sire, but certainly Joey Bats is getting the job done right now. Yeah, this is a nice horse, and I think that, you know, he's a horse that needs to grow into himself. He's only four. He's got a, a bright future for him at five. I really believe that. He's got 11 wins this year out of 28 starts. He's been no slouch. He's won the Dover Open twice in a row there, and then they, they asked him not to come back. So, I mean, he's actually kind of a, you know, a horse that's actually doing it right now, but I think he's got more in the tank still. Is he the type of horse who can take this field down the road tonight? He doesn't have to be down the road. Uh, that's the thing about him. He's just down the road because he's so gifted, but he doesn't have to be on the front. He can win from this off, off the pace. I mean, I'd love to see him off the pace uh, because he can actually just trot right by these things if he's off the pace. You know, we see on his, on his card back in October, uh, early October, that he was racing well with condition stock, and then he kind of picked it up against open stock at Dover Downs. Those horses are real good there. Is he as good now as he's ever been? Well, he's, just, he's, he's mature now. He's just turning five here in the next week here. And it's just time, um, you know. It's a big transition that three to five year old season. And I mean, he still put 150,000 away at four while he's doing the transition. So he's just growing into himself, and I think that he's just finding his best stride now. And hopefully, we can keep him sound and happy. You know, what about a pacer, uh, uh, Andrew, by the name of San Domino? This horse has won three straight. Two of them came here at the Meadowlands and won at Yonkers Raceway. How versatile is this one? I don't know where the bottom on that one is. Um, you know, if he gets the right trip and and he's close within five lengths of them coming off the hop, top of the turn. There's not many that can go with him over the last quarter. I mean, last week he went with a 25 and 4 kicker in the winter. I mean, that's, you know, it just doesn't happen that often. Yeah, beating Endeavor and Lion Steel in a oh, very and that was, solid effort. I think Yannick got to the half and I think 56 and 4 that night. It was highway robbery. <laughs> well, certainly, uh, yeah, if you get, go that slow with a horse of that caliber, no question that you're going to have a big chance to win. One more horse before we go. Tonight's fourth race, Deplorable Tom, and a non-winners of four. Missed the neck last week, but you told me there were some problems. Yeah, he wasn't steering good. He was running in, and Andrew couldn't give him his head. He had to kind of babysit him the whole way down the lane, and you could still see him. He was real crooked. Hopefully, I got him straighter tonight. If I got him straighter, Andrew's job will be real easy. Um, but, you know, hopefully that's uh, the case. He's been a little bit of a headache and not, not cooperating every week, but when he does, he'll be there. All right, well, he better be good tonight because he's my best bet. We'll get to that in a couple of minutes. But for right now, we'd like to say thanks so much to Andrew Harris. Happy holidays to you, Andrew, and thanks so much for spending a few minutes. Thanks for having me. All right, thanks so much to Andrew Harris. In 60 seconds, Dave Brower's going to jump in that chair as Andrew gets to work tonight. We'll talk about tonight's featured preferred handicap for trotters right after this.